Hi there, Simon from simonwood.com. Uh, it's the middle of winter here, and uh, I've got five rosés. Rosé? It's, it's, surely it's just a summer wine, or is it? Well, let's see. They're all from France. Uh, they're all from the southern end of France. Um, uh, but I, I, it's Bordeaux, southern France. Well, let's, I, I'm, it's southwest, so uh, let's give it this one a whirl. It's Marks and Spencer's own labelled Bordeaux rosé, and uh, from the 2010 vintage. Grapes here will be probably mostly Merlot with a little bit of um, uh, Cabernet. Uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, but um, I don't know, it doesn't say on the back, but I imagine Merlot based. Well, there's a clean, juicy red fruit sappiness here. Feels like there's going to be um, almost like what I call apple and blackberry pie. There's a bit of that red apple crunchiness, uh, but with a little bit of uh, darker fruit in there as well. What I call fair enough wine. Um, quite a bit of, it's 13% alcohol, so it's got a bit of body to it. Uh, so, whereas it hasn't got a huge depth of fa flavour, that, uh, that, uh, that sort of fleshy alcohol is carrying it through. Uh, maybe there's a little touch of greenness there, but um, with splitting hairs, it's, um, it's one of those wines, chill it down, bring out the smoked salmon. Robert et ton oncle. Um, next one, we are, I don't know whereabouts this is from, it says Van de France, a new world style of blended varietals, 95% Grenache, 5% Syrah, which if it's got those grapes in, uh, it says to me Southern France. So it's a look, uh, Le Poussin Rosé, um, a set, uh, there's, a, there's a Poussin Blanc, Poussin, Poussin Rouge and Poussin, Poussin Rosé, uh, produced by a guy called Sacha Lichin, uh, who's got to, who makes the world's most expensive and probably, the, yeah, I think for me the best rosé in the world at a place called Chateau d'Esclin in Provence. But I'm not sure uh, how much Provence uh, there is in here. Maybe the house style will have rubbed off on uh, on the wine. It's certainly got that pale uh, Provencal Provencal rosé colour. But let's give it a whirl and see. Yeah, and there's a, a, a lightness and delicacy. Sometimes um, a Pro Provence Rosé is always on that light, delicate side. Sometimes it can be too light and too delicate and doesn't actually taste it very much. But uh, here it feels like there's a, a little bit of um, juiciness, uh, some uh, strawberry richness, um, but it doesn't feel like it's going to be huge in terms of uh, class, but huge in terms of gluggability. Let's see. Okay, it's fresh, it's um, a bit of tanginess to it. Um, there's, a, again, as with the first ones, a slight hint of greenness there, as if maybe some fruit's been picked a little bit early to, uh, uh, so it's not gone uh, too full-bodied. And a touch of sweetness, uh, maybe a slightly sweeter style than the, uh, 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 than the, the, the Bordeaux one. 12.5% uh, mm -hmm. uh, alcohol. It's okay. I, I prefer the Bordeaux. It's, it's, it's okay. Not great. Okay, we have got two from Provence now. Uh, first one is Commanderie de Pérasol, Côte de Provence, 2010. So, main grapes here will be, uh, there'll be some Grenache in there. Uh, there might be a, a grape called Tiburon, uh, which uh, is a red grape that uh, only grows in that, uh, that really, I think there are, you, you might find a few bits elsewhere in the world, but uh, really it's, it, it's only made for, uh, used for uh, proper wines in Provence. Uh, you don't make it as a red wine, apparently as a red wine it's, it's not very good, but it, it, it gives uh, character to rosé. Some, some people say it gives a soundy character, but um, then you come across other uh, Provence rosés which have got this sort of sandy character and they haven't got any Tiburon in, but I'll shut up and taste it. Well, this seems um, it's similar, very similar colour to the to the one before, but it feels like he's got a bit more uh, body and richness, uh, and uh, more strawberry, a bit more apple in there, and uh, maybe even a little bit of cherry too. Uh, it smells like it's going to be honest, good, um, not hugely complex, but satisfying. And that's just what you want from Provence Rosé. Um, a little bit of body, a little bit of freshness, some fruit. Um, yes, uh, bring me on, bring me some bays, and uh, I will hoover up rather a lot of that. And um, yes, it's, it, it, I, I, I wasn't expecting something stunningly complex. Um, it doesn't, I, I was talking about the uh, Chateau d'Esclam wines. They have almost like extra rares of Burgundian richness, which you shouldn't say, you shouldn't compare Provence and uh, Burgundy, but the way in which they've, uh, they've done their élevage on, on those wines is, is terrific. Here, slightly more simple, um, but um, still pretty tasty. I might have a glass of that tonight. Let's see whether I want a glass of this uh, next one. It's Famille Negrel, Côte de Provence Saint-Victoire, 2010. 
again not sure of the grape varieties here but it's the same price about 10 quid as the as the one before um, let's see whether it's similar uh, in other ways now this has more of a, a, a sandy richness to it. Uh, I was talking about that sandy character. Um, I, and I, you must have got sand in your sandwich. And apart from the grittiness, there's, uh, there's like this well, sandy taste. I can't think of any other way of describing it. If you've not done it, go down to the beach, put your bread on the, uh, the beach and, uh, and, and chew it. But make sure you've got some Marmite or something in, um, on the side just to uh, take the taste out of your mouth. Uh, but it smells like, it, it, it's funny, it smells uh, more, more developed than the, the one before. It doesn't smell like it's going to have uh, uh, quite that sprightly freshness that was in the, uh, in the parasol, but maybe a bit more body and weight. Yeah, more on the dark fruit side, uh, maybe if that one's the, the strawberries and cherries, here a bit more blackberry, but still with that apple character. Another thing I noticed, touch of sweetness on the finish. Um, it, it doesn't feel like as quite an, as aristocratic and poised as the as the one before. It's okay, but um, yeah, uh, the parasol is the classier act. Let's see whether we get a classy act with Rive Haute 2010 uh, Tanat Cabernet Sauvignon from Southwest France, and um, got the best rosé trophy in the. Uh, what used to be called the, the uh, uh, Van der Pey, Top 100 Van der Pey, now it's the Top 100 IGP. Give it a whirl. And it's a very different style of rosé. This is more, uh, some, some rosés want to be white wines, this one wants to be a red wine. So here you're getting, feels like it's going to have maybe a bit of chewiness and, and tannin in, Tannat and Cabernet Sauvignon both being quite firm grapes. Um, uh, and it's, it's, got, it's more on that dark fruit edge. So black currants, blackberries, a uh, bit of plums in there, and uh, yeah, a bit, bit full of body too. I like it. I don't like it as much as, as the judges at the, uh, uh, the IGP competition did. I, I find it a touch on the simple side. Uh, there's a, a, a slightly rounded sweetness. It's a bit of a crowd pleaser. Um, it's... Uh, I, I can't fault it in terms of flavour, I can fault it in terms of lack of complexity. But uh, who looks to rosé for complexity? Actually, we should look to rosé for complexity. We look to white wines for complexity, we look to red wines for complexity, so why not rosé? As I said, Chateau d'Esclam manages it. Uh, for me, none of these, apart from maybe the parasol, got to anything beyond the crowd pleaser. And... Um, but I'd be very happy to sit down with a glass of uh, most of them. Maybe not the uh, Poussin Rosé, but uh, it's still okay. Hey, see you soon.